sponsored by Native. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Alexandra, and in today's video, I'm tackling a DIY for this unused space at the top of my stairs. I feel like if you have stairs in your home, you might be wondering, what can I do on this landing, if anything? I'm here to hopefully solve that question in my own home. So I found this inspo on Pinterest and I think I was looking at like how do you decorate a landing or like landing ideas, stairway ideas and there's honestly not a ton out there and I knew I was going to have to make something custom but I love the shape of this console table and if I had a grand entryway this would definitely be in it. So I want to try and recreate something similar using like hardboard. I want to plaster the whole thing to give it lots of texture. What do you think? Okay, I'm gonna try and DIY something similar, but something that fits on this landing. So let me just take you over there and show you what the situation is. This is the landing. I love this bench. It really works here. It's just a great kind of catch-all for me to put like all the stuff I need to bring with me for the day. As you guys can see, it's really dark and it's just not really serving like that much of a purpose. This is our entryway. You walk up the stairs, you end up here and then it opens up into our kitchen and dining room and living room. This bench definitely does not fit here, but I do think we could do some sort of shelf and just have it as a place to put like candles and a little bit of decor just to make it not look so plain. I have my measuring tape here. I'm gonna see realistically like how deep I can make this shelf. So the mirror sticks out about four inches. So I think in the ideal world, I do a shelf that is 3.5 inches and then do a mirror that's more flush to the wall so it doesn't feel so closed off. I kind of love going into these videos, these smaller DIY videos without having like a real plan and just kind of seeing how it all unfolds and works out. So I'm gonna head to the Team AG workshop and get DIYing. You guys know I have been using Native Deodorant for years. I also really love using their body wash. A native body wash leaves your skin feeling so soft and hydrated and froths into a really luxe lather. Of course, they are made from naturally derived ingredients and help cleanse your skin while being vegan and also cruelty free. The scents are long lasting and keep me smelling fresh even when we're doing DIYs and makeovers. The scents I have been loving recently are the citrus and herbal musk, charcoal, which is actually this fun black color, <laughs> and eucalyptus and mint, which I actually used this morning. I smell so good. Of course, I have a discount to share with you. So three body washes are normally $27, but if you use my link and code, you can get three of them for $17, which is over 40% off. With my code, you can also get 20% off any deodorant or lotion. Let's get back to DIYing. Okay, it's time to build. First, we're sketching out the shape on the hardboard. Next, I'm using a table saw and a jigsaw to cut the arch shapes out of the hardboard. Now we have that shape that we want for the front. Not the cleanest cuts anyone has ever made, but on my part, obviously not Gramps. <laughs> but I try. What I like about it too is that there's so much space here that it's not gonna feel like it's taking over that whole landing, I don't think. No. That's very cool. So cool. Wow, I love it. Yay, good job. Nice. So it's been a couple days. The frame is done, as you guys saw. Now it's time to add the arches. So we're using hardboard. We're going to basically like almost fold it so it's curved. We're gonna use construction adhesive and staples to adhere it. You would have been very impressed at my cutting. I was using a jigsaw and a table saw. Graham was not, but you would be. Great. Okay, so before we add the hardboard arches, we're actually adhering these two by fours to our frame. This is gonna make it more sturdy. 
and this is what the hardboard is going to attach to. The depth of these is only three and a half inches. This is a really narrow console because we're not working with a lot of space. We are using blocks to give the table depth and gluing them all the way around the back of the arches with wood glue. Once they're attached with the glue, I'm going in with the nail gun to make them extra secure. We're done making the frame. We're gonna flip it over and show you guys and then we are going to um, do the arches with the hardboard. We all look like babies at a concert. One of the pieces we just cut is gonna be for the top of the console table. The one in the middle is gonna be for the arch in the middle. And then I need to cut this down in two spots and these are going to be the side like half arches. Now I'm going to go in with construction adhesive, we're going to put the arch on and then go in with the staple gun. You guys, this console table is looking so, so good. It's the perfect size. And it's finally time to move on to plastering it. So this is what's gonna make it look really textured and give it the look of stone. This is what it looks like. So good. So Graham filled all the holes with wood filler, sanded it all down, and then went in with some primer. We're gonna be using some plaster of Paris to give it the stone-like effect. We're gonna first put fiberglass drywall tape all over the console table. That's gonna help the plaster of Paris stick to it, and we're just gonna kind of wing it with like putty knives and make it look really, really textured. You could also probably do this with spackle, but we have such a large surface to fill that I think the plaster of Paris is gonna be easier. Ready, Graham? Yeah. Oh. I was just Googling how to do it. <laughs> Go. I love this behind the scenes. I love the behind the scenes too. It says you spread the cream cheese, wait for it to dry. So you're looking at how to make a sandwich? Bagel. Okay. <laughs> I came across a site that said add white glue. Oh. Okay. So, and paint. But I'm thinking maybe we should do, should we do a test batch first? Yes. Okay, it's time to mix up some milk. You will need clean cold water, not dirty. Clean mixing container, broad putty knife or trowel, sandpaper or sponge. Add two parts dap, sister <laughs> of ferret. Oh no, dap's like this. What is it? No. Like a dish. Is it called dab? Or it's a dab. Dab. Ignore me. You know what? We should skip the tester. Okay, I'm gonna mix it for real then. I'll do a full cup. I'm gonna be a little quick. I'm gonna add some white glue. Okay. And it's just to make it a little bit. Add it in. Stronger. 
and we're gonna mix. Whip it, because it's already been about a minute. Make pancakes. It's a spray. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, this is really, it's like pancake batter. Okay, I'm starting in that area, okay? Yeah. Oh. We want all that texture in there, people. I think we'll have to do a couple coats. coats. Yeah. This is just to get it nice and adhered. While we wait for the plaster to dry, I'm going to test out two paint colors. This looks lilac. It was supposed to be beige, but it looks lilac. And this looks very pink. And see which one, if any, will work on the table. I really like this color. You hate it. No, I, I like it a lot. Well, it's called setting plaster. I think it'll look really nice with all the texture. That's really pretty. We have to let this dry in between coats. I am going to go up to the studio, get some work done. Graham is going to do a second coat, probably also a third. And then on Monday, we are going to sand it all down and paint. It is a couple days later and I've just walked into the workshop. The plaster is dry, it looks so good. And today we're doing the last step, which is painting, but I wanna show you what it looks like. Fun fact, we're using a Farrow and Ball color, but we got it color matched at Benjamin Moore. We just gave him the color name. We got it for much cheaper than Farrow and Ball. Ooh, that is nice. So it is the next day, the paint has dried. Graham um, brought the console over and I'm so, so excited to put it in there and see how it's gonna look. I hope it fits. The first thing I'm gonna do is take down this mirror and replacing it with the one in the bathroom. We're just gonna do a little swap and then we're gonna bring the console in. Oh, it's a little tight. It doesn't fit because we plastered it, which added a little bit on each side. So I would say if you're doing this project and you want it to go wall to wall, don't do the exact, exact measurements. Go a tiny, tiny bit less. You can always calc the edges. We are going to cut this down using a saw, but you don't really want to be doing that because the plaster could crack. So we don't advise. Pretty good. To make this look very like built into the wall, we are tracing the legs and then using a tool called a scribe, right? This one's a compass. A compass, not a scribe. Um, and we're going to fit the legs flush against the baseboard. Graham is actually teaching me how to do this. So in turn, I will teach all of you. The first thing we're gonna do is trace the baseboard, cut out that shape. We were gonna use like a piece of MDF. We're gonna use painter's tape instead because it's easier to cut out. Then we're gonna trace that onto the leg of the console table, cut that out with a saw, and then it'll fit seamlessly into the baseboard. You'll probably use this once in your life, but. <laughs> Even though you seem to use it every like couple weeks, but. I'm gonna line this up to like the point that sticks out the most. Okay. You're gonna set your compass or scribe or whatever to the distance between the the wall yeah. and this edge. Use the pinpoint as yep. your guide and just gently trace the shape. The shape. Keep them completely horizontal. You just wanna go over your lines. Did you ever think in math class you'd be using a compass for this? No. No, I didn't really pay attention to math class. I failed math. Yeah. My teacher advised me that I should leave the class because I had a 43. So I didn't actually have the chance to fail. I was already failing in that class. <laughs> now we're gonna cut this out with an X-Acto knife. Okay. And we're gonna just 
slap it on each side. Let's peel this guy. Wow. Whoa. It's magic. That was so good. Okay. Okay. Nice. Pop that on there. And then we're gonna cut around it. Once we've hung it on the wall, this piece is gonna like hug that piece of baseboard perfectly. So you're marking around the tape. Yeah. I'm just like kind of sketching on it. Okay. And then the negative space is what we're gonna cut out. And we can use the same piece on oh, yeah. the other leg, right? Yep. Cool. We're using a French cleat to hang this. Originally, we were gonna do little keyholes and then use like two screws, like you would hang a picture, but a French cleat I think is gonna be stronger. And also Graham cut the tool he needed to do the keyholes. He cut the cord of it, so it doesn't actually work. Yeah, it'll be fine though. <laughs> Okay, look how nicely that goes in though. Ooh. Uh, I just told, I just, sorry. You saw this? Yes, I just pointed it out. I, uh, the noises. So there was a crack, right? There's a crack. This looks so good. It's the perfect size. It doesn't take up too much of the landing. It's like exactly what this little spot needed. Okay, so somehow the crack that Graham was freaking out about just like disappeared and Amanda and I don't know how and Graham won't tell us. So the crack on the leg is gone. It's still there. It's just, it has a little tiny bit of elasticity. It just went. Graham also like trimmed the table legs a bit and then pushed it back against the baseboard. And I guess the two pieces that were coming apart sandwiched back together, essentially. Or like Graham said, magic. No, it was magic. It fits so, so nicely against the baseboards. I've decided that we're not going to caulk around the edges. This really is supposed to be a table and not like a built-in piece. Graham's just filling in um, any little like cracks with some putty and I'm gonna hang the mirror. This was in the bathroom. This mirror was actually always meant to be here. I just never got around to hanging it and then it ended up in the bathroom. So I'm excited to see it up on the wall. That looks so good. Yeah, that mirror was like meant to be here. Graham's not gonna like, I don't know how to say this, but I kind of think it needs, the wall needs some paint. Paint? <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, because it's kind of like, kind of like unfinished. I think I'm gonna test a few colors. I wanna test lime wash. We have a really nice green at the studio. We have a beige. But I also want to swatch the paint color I used on the table, on the wall. It's like a monochromatic moment, you know? Early on in the planning stage of this, I was thinking we would do wall sconces that were battery powered, but I didn't go that route because I measured and I just think they would stick out way too much. But I think that painting this wall will make it feel more complete, an intentional like moment. Cause right now the things are just floating. All this paint that we have to choose from is from the studio. We have a large paint collection, so this is just like leftover stuff. Um, so we didn't buy anything new, which is nice. The first color I'm gonna test is the green, like the olive colored lime wash. There's also so much green in my house already, so I'm like unsure about it. And then the second color I'm gonna swatch is the color of the console. So I'm gonna start with those two and then we'll go from there. Ew, what the f Smells like a old boat shed. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. I actually thought I was gonna get it. <laughs> oh. Hey Google, does lime wash paint go bad? They say the lime wash will erode over time, requiring renewal coating every five to seven years. Hey Google, why does lime wash smell like a rotten dead mouse? Or fish. I don't know, but I found these results on search. She doesn't know. Hey Google, what does a cat sound like? This is a cat. <laughs> no, I'm good. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. no. 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 Welcome to the animal of the day. Hey Google, set an alarm every day at 5:30 a.m. You got it. Your alarm set every day at 5:30 a.m. 
going really rogue, and that's way too watery, but... It looks like a pond. <laughs> looks like mud, mud. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I think if we do any other color than, like, matching, it's going to look... Ooh, that's nice. Oh. It's okay, this smells like grandpa's breath. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like a grandpa's breath. <laughs> oh, it actually smells We're adding the French cleats to the wall. Ah! Oh, what? Nice. Woo! Wow. Solid. That is so solid. This looks so good. Perfect call to paint. Looks amazing. Yeah, it looks great. The paint was so necessary. Totally agree. Over the holidays, I decided to switch up the mirror. This one's from Mirror Home Decor Art, and I love it so much more. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, I will see you next time. Bye.